Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Practical Asian, or, you know what, the most practical of Asians. It's there in the name. I'm back, and it's not every day that we have to talk about YouTubers. I think that's something that YouTube has to understand, or a lot of content creators have to actually understand. Because, you know, they have to cover everything. But, that criticism out of the way. This is one situation where I feel like you shouldn't cover this, but you should at the same time. It walks a fine line on that kind of border. And to be very honest, it was something that I was kind of walking on a fine line on to even make this video. But here we are today. I guess I'm posting it. Um, today we're going to be talking about Chuck Conroy and his entire allegations. And just to preface this by saying this, this is a whole disclaimer. If you're here for only the second part of this allegation, I'll go ahead and put a time code somewhere here. Um, if you're here for the entire thing, sit back, grab popcorn, get a drink, do whatever. And let's have a nice spicy conversation. All right, so to start this off, we're gonna go ahead and just preface exactly how this allegation will be covered. Um, First, you have Lady Emily that I kind of have to give context to, and of course, I've explained that previously, but we're also going to be talking about some sort of child here, I guess. Um, but the proper timeline uh, suggests that we should go ahead and talk about Lady, uh, Lady Emily to begin with. Um, now, Lady Emily's uh, screenshots are a little all over the place, but I'll do my best to give you a concrete timeline. Um, but with that being said, how Lady Emily uh, starts this off is, fuck it. Just to get it off my chest, last year Chugga Conroy kept trying to get me to initiate erotic foot fetish roleplay with him while he also had a girlfriend. This includes sending shoes to my house under the guise of a gift of a gift only to constantly ask for feet pics afterwards. Eventually, I started to ignore him because I wasn't sure how to navigate around him, clearly trying to rope me into fetish shit, and in return, his messages to me got more frequent and aggressive. Um, here are the screenshots as she posts. Uh, we'll start off with this one. Yeah, pretty far, but we're thinking of immigration next year. Would you like to pick up where we left off last night? Haha, -ha. it dropped off suddenly. You tend to disappear. I'm uh, gonna give you, gonna ping you once more. Well, hello. Have a nice doctor's visit. Sorry to ping you again. I wanted to know. Damn, you're no fun. Kidding, kidding. Just a little concerned. Sorry, that was rude of me. I should, I shouldn't say stuff like that, even jokingly. You have your own stuff going on as much as I do. Hey, hey. Sorry, am I bugging you too much? I just got off of work. I just got off of work and saw I hadn't heard back. Hey, yo, how's today? Feeling any better? Hi, sorry if I'm bugging you. I understand you've got your own stuff going on. I just wanted to wish you well tonight after seeing you, uh, after seeing you talking about how much being sick set you back. I've really enjoyed talking to you more than, uh, more though. More through it. Apologies. I'll leave you be after this message in case you need rest. Uh, and then he messages, I missed you. Are you doing better? Blah. Uh, quite literally, blah. And Emily follows up with, as far as I know, I'm not the only nor the first person he's done this to. He would try to assure me everything is fine while also clearly trying to initiate a fetish italicized text RP. Interesting. Uh, that's what I thought too. Uh, I would. That's what I thought. Thought too. I was like, I could fix this, but it's funnier if it's flawed. At at times, I do miss the versatility of the old avatar. It was fun to mess with. Uh, is that fa is that the face you'd make if I ran off with your shoes at a con? Amazing, Chug Conroy amazing and then this uh this image we're gonna come back to in a bit but it's Jungle conroy going ahead and saying you know hey 
being forward with you. I'd rather not keep anything from you. Let you make the best decision for you. Uh, I am into that, but only with my significant other. I just, uh, the, that would be the foot fetish, I guess. Um, I just also like talking about shoes with people because it's an interest. I talked with my SO about this and we started dating. Um, and she told me I can talk about shoes with other people that isn't sexual with my friends in any ways, I guess. Uh, it's just something I enjoy talking about with my friends too. With him finally ending it off on, I know that might be a lot to share. I'm so sorry if it is. I feel it's the best to just be open with people considering what I'm like to know if I'm in their position. Now, here's the thing. If someone's going ahead and telling you, hey, just to let you know, and you, this is a way to go ahead and say, no, I don't want this. Uh, leave me alone. You know, you should go ahead and say, no, I don't want this. Leave me alone right? I don't see, see the most of this conversation, this is back in September, he's posting this. So most of this conversation is kind of like, you know, what's even going on? You don't expose this kind of stuff. At least that's not what I think. This is exactly a fetish. He didn't assault you. He didn't try to do anything harmful with you, which is great. I'm going to be honest, but it's also a little bit concerning that you know you would share private information about a person where i'd rather you just go talk to his girlfriend or his significant other um him in a private call and all that stuff and if he continues to do this and you have proof of that you know then it makes more sense but just posting your dms with someone about like hey, they're just talking about shoes, they like it, and all that stuff, and then uh, they were open about it with you, I don't know, man, it's it's kind of weird, uh, here's where I'm just gonna go ahead and just be like, you know what, hands up, I, I don't know, I'm not someone that, you know, likes sniffing feet, or whatever people do with a foot fetish, but look, man, the world's weird, people are weird, and we're we're all into weird shit, I guess. I don't know. Uh this is just like ah, it hurts my brain. But anyways. Um Lady Emily then continues with It had started with him attending my Pokemon Black streams last December and chatting, and we just started talking in DMs because he seemed chill. Then on June 4th, I uploaded a selfie and he zoomed into my shoes in the background and messaged me about them. Now, if that happened in June 4th, which I'm guessing from screenshots looking at this timeline, it does look like that. Um, June to September is a long time. So if he hadn't addressed it with you like back then, I completely against, uh, I completely get getting creeped out. And then him bringing it up. I feel like people are not focusing on that timeline specifically. But man. That's weird. Anyways. Um, he then says. Or here's the conversation as it goes. According to this. I've done 54. Uh, go to work. If I may be so bold. Sneaker size. And generally around. Whatever the size is. Um. And yes, it's blacked out, so none of you uh, foot fetish fans go ahead and get any interesting ideas, I guess. Um, but with uh, but that's usually what works most often. I'm betting he went ahead and bought a gift because following this, uh, it, it sounds like they're talking in the context of a gift. And honestly, at this point, the screenshots don't make really any sense to cover um, and again, it's a private conversation between two consenting adults at this point. Um, she then falls off with, uh, convos would often derail suddenly one moment you'd just be talking about Nintendo games and then it would shift immediately to feet talk. He was very persistent in commenting on how big my feet are. I tried to respond with blunt jokes to make the vibes less creepy out of nervousness. 
again, can completely understand, but I don't think Twitter was the best place to do this. Um, that being said, I also don't have a good solution as to how to deal with someone with a feet fetish. Like, dude, I heard about it online. I've never really met someone who's into feet. Like, that's just wild for me. Um, uh, and then of course, Chuck Conroy goes ahead and apologizes. I'm not going to show the entire apology because it's kind of like, it's not even relevant anymore. Um, and we do also go ahead and get screenshots from, uh, May Analea, uh, where she goes ahead and she says, after the number of people who inquired about Chuck Conroy over MAGFest, I feel I need to make this clear. I'm not associated with Emily for years. Or Emil for years. I don't know why I call it Emily. Uh, but Emil for years. Nor are we friends. And then. Uh, I am comfortable with the way he has. Uh, no I am uncomfortable with the way he has talked to. Slash about me in the past. Which has been a huge point of distress. Combined with the way he's spoken to. Slash about others. Particularly women in private and public. It is concerning, and I do not want to associate with that behavior. And Emil has historically been one to push off boundaries, or to push boundaries. Being faced with a following as large as his is absolutely harrowing. Even establishing my own personal boundaries carries an inherent risk for a long time. Not rocking the boat felt like the safer option. And then she basically keeps on going. Uh, again, a lot of her tweets, I just feel like, look, um, as this was mostly supposed to be behind closed doors. It's not like he assaulted any women or whatever. Again, it's creepy. I get it. But if I understand, and here's the thing, I'm not going to go ahead and make excuses for just any random guy. But if I understand Emil, he is someone who is mentally deficient. I would say, uh, look, I'd just say retarded, but I guess that's not socially acceptable anymore, but I don't know what is socially acceptable to describe it. I'm just going to go with mentally deficient nowadays. Um, if that angers someone, uh, so be it. I could give less of a shit. Honestly, I practically don't care. Ha <laughs> ha plug anyways. Um, and you know, she even comments on the apologies. It's kind of whatever. And then there are other women that come out and I'm just going to go ahead and flash their responses on the screens where, or their tweets on the screen where honestly they don't, they don't have any evidence. And again, it's not like he's assaulting or doing anything to anyone. I'm being light on him for this solely for the fact that if, as I'm aware, he's mentally deficient and I don't think, uh, you know, really punching down on someone that really doesn't understand social cues or whatever is going to do anything to anyone. I feel like, again, if this was a normal dude and, you know, he was doing this kind of stuff, yeah, you know, the internet should go ahead and just be like, hey, you don't do that kind of stuff. But if it's someone that doesn't understand social cues and they're just trying to, you know, be them, it's hard. It's hard. And I can see why, um, you know, people will defend this guy. Uh, but anyways, moving on, uh, then she says... Uh, then Lady Emily comes back out of nowhere on January 23rd and says, Emil, we didn't have a convo uh, where we settled this privately. I had to have one with one of your friends to talk to, uh, to talk to you because you kept bothering me and spreading personal info about me to the point where I didn't feel safe and said, uh, and said friend had to tell you to leave me alone. Here's the thing. You know how, uh, Lady Emily was going ahead and, uh, sharing those screenshots where there were her feet sizes and all that stuff, and she was able to black that out. Now, here's the thing. You don't even attempt to post anything that could go ahead and show that he was doxing you, I believe, and, you know, talking with the friend or whatever. I feel like this is a loaded, a loaded pile of shit. I'm going to be honest. I don't believe her in the slightest here because... If you were willing to, like, out his foot fetish with, like, just the, um, you know, the DMs, then this would be your smoking gun. And we can talk about him being abusive, him being, you know, uh, like, it doesn't matter, uh, matter how mentally deficient you are at this point, right? If you're spreading someone's mental, uh, personal information 
and you are threatening them and you know you have to have multiple conversations with your friends about you know where it should be at then i completely get you know clowning on the guy but that's not what happened here unfortunately now here's where we get into the deeper parts of the allegation and this is going to be a little harrowing uh to say the least so worcester uh worcester i believe is how you say the name or whatever uh here's a screenshot goes ahead and tweets out uh you know Riggy chugga conroy i'm sharing the story of a close friend of mine to allow her to maintain anonymity and then she says she's feeling she feels it's relevant to share given the dynamic started when she was 15 years old and he was 19. Now, I want to start off by prefacing something here, and I feel like people on Twitter and Reddit are not understanding something. Though they are 15 and 19 years old, the evidence even points to the fact that um, Lolly, who is a quote-unquote victim here, um, she herself was in a relationship with someone else. So this is not a case of Peppa Pig file. This is not the case of um, them dating or doing anything. Uh, it's just a weird conversation, to say the least, that you really can't excuse. But also at the same time, this is just another case of like, yo, he's just been talking inappropriately and he really needs to go ahead and really see like, hey, this is not cool. Not in the slightest. And to discourage this kind of communication with anyone, especially a fan. Um, but with that being said, and that added context there, um, I don't think people gave it enough time of the day to really realize uh, what is even being said. And I highly encourage you guys to go ahead and check out the evidence that I'll be linking below and to really give it a proper read through. So to go ahead and read her statement on the matter, she basically says, hey, Lolly here, and I'm nervous to speak about any of this. So please bear with me. I wish to remain anonymous. So uh, as I'm not a public figure, I'm just a person trying to do the right thing and please ask uh, that you respect my privacy. Um, I've known Chugga Conroy since 2009 and we started speaking as a friend or as friends starting early as early 2010. I believe at that time Chugga Conroy was posting on YouTube, uh, but I'm not too sure. We started talking because of a cringe video I made doing voice lines in Gigas. I have no idea what that is. And I was so excited to meet and talk to my hero at the time. I didn't have many friends, so it felt extra special to have someone as important as him show interest in speaking with me. At the time, uh, Emil or Chugga uh, used AIM uh, or AOL's Instant Messenger. And I had a potato PC that couldn't run it, so I had to go ahead and use this thing called Mebo, which let me use AIM in a browser to speak with him. I saved the logs in a message to myself on Gaia Online because of how precious they were to me at the time. I haven't used that site in years, but recent allegations against Chugga made me really start to think about and question our friendship. I dug up everything and started to read through all the old messages between us, and uh, it's bad. Beyond the 2010 era cringe, he said things to me while I was underage or not okay. It never occurred to me when I was younger how bad the situation was. And at the time, I was so, so excited. My hero was, my hero was talking to me and showing interest in me for years. And I was friends with him and never really thought about how bad the situation actually was. Uh, I'm still coming to terms with all of it, and to be honest, I'm not really sure how anyone should feel. I'm, I know it's not right, though. Speaking that way to a minor is unacceptable, and I worry if anyone else has been affected and also might be too afraid to speak out. I understand that people may be skeptical of the claims like this. I'm sure if he's your hero too, you would want to believe uh, you wouldn't want to believe any of this. Outwardly, he's a very kind guy. I still struggle with feeling as though I betrayed a friend, but given everything, I'm not sure he ever truly was. Uh, he ever truly saw me as a friend to begin with. I've documented all of the logs, and I've and I have the only things I've 
uh, redacted are things that are very personal to myself and Emil, family stuff, locations, etc. I respect that, by the way. Uh, I've screen uh, I've screen shared, or I would say screenshotted, but okay, screen shared all of this uh, information with Worcester. So if the logs and the screenshot are sketchy to you, I can promise you they have been seen in real time by someone whose identity is unknown. It's real. Um, I promise you, uh, it's all sadly real. Okay. Um. I'll go ahead and read the footnote in a bit. To this part, I don't really like here. Because you're going ahead and saying, oh, hey, it's real, but this person that I showed it to, I share a screen, so you're going to have to take my word for it. Here's the thing. I don't believe that. Um, that part right there sends a red flag to me because if you're willing to go ahead and screen share your thing, we have OBS now. OBS is not that hard on your computer it is really easy to set up. Heck, you don't even need to use OBS. I believe there's a lot of, you know, desktop screen recording softwares out there. It's really easy to do. Why don't you just share that video, right? Why don't you just link to a video on YouTube that you have public somewhere and then boom, you know, we can go ahead and see that these are real. That I'm not going to accept. And it also makes me question the validity of any of these claims. Again, I'm not trying to question the victim here, right? Um, by what has happened to her, and if it's real, and if it's true, I, I really do hope that she's okay, but to be honest here, this, that entire paragraph throws me off, and I'm just like, okay, I'm going in now with a doubt, and more than just wanting to believe them, and a footnote for all those who plan to read the logs, please do so with your own discretion, as a lot of the language that I and Emil used uh, is dated and extremely unacceptable. Uh, yeah, I can see that. 20, uh, 2010 times were really something uh, different and caused me physical pain, uh, physical pain to read over. Trust me, it's going to pain me even more to read whatever you guys uh, did. Um, anyways, I'm not going to go over a Gaia webpage tutorial. Uh, and they do show the screenshots, but I'm going to hit X to doubt here. I don't go ahead and trust the fact that she even said that in that paragraph, hence why. And another thing I want to go ahead and point out is as I'm reading these DMs to you, um, they're going to be painly obvious um, as to how the, um, what do you say, that she's not entirely truthful herself either. And you'll get as to why. Um... First, I believe she also goes ahead and talks about a Discord message that happened. Um, where it says, I literally knew nothing about Footman. Footman's. I also didn't know it was a thing. Uh, like, I look at a foot and I'm like, uh, it's a foot. Um, a proto hand. What? Um... I recall yours and it has something awfully unusual about them, did they? And Chugga continues to say, have you been in those shoes uh, undisturbed for 12 years? Because, like, I'm not sure I can picture what it was. I'm saving them for marriage, uh, is what this girl replies. I guess I shouldn't joke around if you didn't like the idea of this, but would you want to do that? Do what? And then... Uh, do what we used to do one more time. What did we do? Uh, am I forgetting something here? Or are you bullying me again? And the shoe things that they did as teenagers. Anyways, so I went ahead and cherry picked a bunch of screenshots from the chat logs as we would go ahead and uh, see in the documentation. Again, I'm prefacing this by saying you know, the entire documentation will be linked down below, but these takeaways, I think, paint the picture together, and I'll also give my own opinion on it later, but uh, to begin with, it starts out with them saying, hot uh, Jesus with a side of pudding, uh, Lolly says, told you, um, and then he talks about his music taste, but then here's the interesting part here, so uh, a lot of people just saw this part and said, uh, Chugga Conroy, I have a Dragon Rule Island remix uh, in there that's over 200 times, 
also lolly uh went ahead and said i r word my songs apparently so yeah and then chuggo responds with i'm going to r word you which is really not okay to say in any context i don't know why he thought that was okay to say but anyways i can't defend the guy here like that's just weird you don't say that to someone um anyways and then she goes ahead and reciprocates by saying would it be if it was you know would it be that if it's the person that wants it you know uh maybe suggesting that she wants to be done in like that but whatever we're gonna gonna we're gonna go ahead and continue um that's just weird and then the conversation then goes uh now if uh, now i can see if it uh if i tilt my head to match the crooked frames um walks into wall you know they do a little bit of rp here or whatever and then you sure you want to take uh you want me taking your score uh skirt that's chugga and you know chugga even says that's illegal you know uh lolly then says uh not the one i'm wearing uh hand spared skirt uh and then chugga's like i'll wear it as a hat and you know they're joking about what it, like imagine if he was gay or whatever uh to then another set of dms going ahead and saying where lolly specifically states that she's interested in another guy um that's like 18 hours away and all that stuff chugga is then saying someone fails to calculate how far away florida is from canada and she even is very clear where she says i told you i had someone i loved right so there's uh and she even says it's weird to even think that like her at 15 or 16 now and him at 20 that wouldn't work so um that's another key takeaway here i know i'm going through all a lot of these dms fast but this is already a long enough video as is but then uh there's also another set of information where uh if you look at lolly and chugga's dms um again trying to skip past all of the parts where you know uh it's basically a whole bunch of nothing burger and it's just a normal conversation whatever normal here is unfortunately it is wild um chugga then even says that like i've come to the conclusion that every girl in existence uh, uh that he's ever met one or more of the following criteria they live 2000 miles away gay related to you under 18 and illegal mentally insane taken or married uh showing that he is full well understanding of the fact that you know a peppa pig file affilia is not okay would then um lolly uh then here's this set of interesting dms where we have chuck conroy going ahead and saying all right in case i don't see you again today sleep well um and then uh as that conversation is going chugga then says uh you sure love putting me to sleep so i'm helpless to whatever it is you want to do with me and lolly responds with if i wanted to r word you i would but i don't i guess that's what she's trying to say here i don't know what i done means but i'm gonna say i don't um and it felt like it, and then chugga was just like oh i was like where you going to say something and she just avoids it right so looking at this i don't think those are normal conversations to have with anyone especially someone underage but it is clear that there is nothing romantic going on with them in the slightest from what i've seen here um and though i cannot go ahead and excuse chugga for what he said or done uh i also cannot excuse a lot of what was said from the 15 year old so anyone going ahead and saying this guy's a peppa pig file i would say you're wrong this is not the case of him being a peppa pig file but with that being said um and my cat just going ahead and wanting to make an introduction for himself while i'm ending the video uh if you like what you saw like comment and subscribe i would love to have you here um you know i'm still trying to put out the best kind of videos i can and i love the support thank you guys for basically 30 subscribers my cat thanks you too as well and um if you dislike dislike i guess but 
with that being said, uh, look, I'm practical Asian, and I practically could care less about this whole Chugga Conroy situation. And I am out. See ya. I can hear the sound, I can hear the beat.